In the year 2000, Florida was in the national spotlight, embroiled in a contested presidential election. This could not be closer. At the same time the U.S. Supreme Court was deciding the race, President Bill Clinton was signing another historic document, one that would shape Florida's future for generations, the Comprehensive Everglades Restoration Plan, or SERP. And once it passed in 2000, it was kind of like the dog catching the car. It was then, what do we do next? Eric Eichenberg, CEO of the Everglades Foundation, says the crisis was undeniable. The Everglades was dying in the 90s, so you saw ecological collapse. You were seeing it on the ground, fish kill, seagrass die-offs. And thank goodness, 25 years ago, people stood up and said, we have to save this national treasure. The goal, protect coastal estuaries, stabilize Lake Okeechobee, secure water supply, support agriculture, and deliver clean, fresh water back to the Everglades. But progress came slowly. From 2000 to 2010, you had authorized projects. The problem was there, the funding wasn't being, uh, wasn't really being allocated to get those projects out of the ground. The priorities started to change around 2013 and what became known as the last summer from toxic algae blooms fueled by the imbalance in Florida plumbing system. Too much Lake Okeechobee water flooded coastal estuaries instead of flowing south. Kids and families were told to stay out of the water on the St. Lucie, the Caloosahatchee was right around the 4th of July holiday. The fish were dying, the seagrass was dying. The crisis hit again in 2016 and 2018, forcing action and unlocking new state and federal funding. Certainly over the last decade, this has been considerable progress. Major projects followed, including the C-44 Reservoir east of Lake Okeechobee, protecting the St. Lucie Estuary, the C-43 Reservoir to the west, benefiting the Caloosahatchee, and the removal of portions of the Tamiami Trail, finally allowing water to more easily flow south. Now, South Florida Water Management Director Drew Bartlett giving me a look at the construction now underway on the largest SERP project yet, the EAA Reservoir. And it is basically a massive, massive infrastructure uh, project, more than $20 billion worth of investment to basically reroute the water, get it where it used to go uh, in the right way, clean. Heavy machinery is reshaping the land to build a dam of historic scale. It will be the second or third largest dam in the country. So where we're standing right now will eventually be underwater? Yes, it will. We will be underwater, <laughs> 15 feet of water. Basically, you could put Manhattan in the middle of this reservoir. It's that big. Once complete, the reservoir will help Florida store water instead of dumping it into the ocean. It's getting the water where it used to be and protecting all these estuaries and restoring the Everglades at the same time. And Bartlett says the momentum is picking up to reach the finish line. SERP overall far behind initial completion dates, but state and federal partnerships are aiming to speed up the EAA reservoir's completion from 2034 to 2029. The momentum is palpable right now. Storage projects north of the lake could be another 15 years. And the price tag? Billions already spent with billions more to go, but is it working? It's absolutely working. Steve Davis, chief science officer at the Everglades Foundation, says improvements in water quality are already measurable. We've built a lot of infrastructure to help manage phosphorus concentrations across the Everglades. And the EAA reservoir, he says, will magnify those gains. On a map, anywhere in South Florida is going to benefit. Born in political chaos, SERP has become rare common ground, uniting both parties around a shared goal, fixing past mistakes and protecting Florida's future. We are the generation that is going to save America's Everglades. Megan McRoberts, WPTV News.